Now that week 14 is officially in the books, let's look back and see what we learned this week. Before we do get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But let's start off with probably the biggest story of the week, DeAndre Swift. He took one step forward last week, but one step backward this week. Instead of Swift slowly getting worked more and more into this offense coming off his injury, we saw this backfield turn into a three-man committee. We saw DeAndre Swift play 36% of the snaps, Jamal Williams played 37 and we saw Justin Jackson take a little bit of that work securing 29% of the snaps. It looks like in most leagues, unless you're in a super deep league, DeAndre Swift cannot be trusted at all. He's gonna continue to be a boomer bust player for the rest of the fantasy football season, but not one that you wanna push all your chips into. Jamal Williams is still leading the backfield. He had 16 carries last week. But if what we saw last week continues, it might be a three-man backfield and you can't trust anybody right now. But if I were to invest in one of these running backs, it would have to be Jamal Williams. Moving on to our next player, Zonovan Knight. Looks like he could have some upside. Even with Michael Carter returning, Zonovan Knight still led the backfield he saw 17 carries to michael carter's five michael carter continues to not see any work in the passing game it seems like michael carter will continue to be a complimentary back similar to what he was when Brees hall was still playing but zonovan knight does have some decent upside looking at the other side of this offense elijah moore might be trending towards being relevant again he led the team in targets last week and has consistently been playing starters snaps Corey davis did exit this game early with a potential concussion which might have led to more volume for elijah moore but he's been looking a lot better not to mention the jets have a very good fantasy football player playoff schedule coming up facing the Lions, Jaguars, and Seahawks, which are all going to pose good game scripts for the wide receivers. But let's look at the other side of the ball here. It looks like Buffalo does not have a clear running back. A lot of people were coming to me last week asking if they should be starting James Cook. I was hesitant to do it and it looks like this week just cemented that point. Cook did take the back seat to Devin Singletary this week, but not by a lot. And it also looked like they are sprinkling a bit of Naheem Hines into this backfield to see if he can get any spark going for him. He did play a small amount of snaps, nothing significant, but it looks like this backfield will continue to be a committee and the only rusher you can trust is Josh Allen. Moving on to our next lesson learned, the wide receiver that I was telling all of you guys to start, I hope you watch the must start video. Jerry Judy continues to be the wide receiver one. He was the only healthy wide receiver in this offense in a pass heavy attack that they did have to draw up for the Chiefs and that proves as long as there is one wide receiver in this offense he's going to eat if Corlin Sutton misses more time Jerry Judy is going to continue to be this hyper efficient wide receiver as we know he caught three touchdowns for 70 yards the same thing was happening to Corlin Sutton when Jerry Judy was missing time Corlin Sutton saw a lot of work but if Corlin Sutton continues to miss more time Jerry Judy needs to be jammed into your starting lineup next week as they play the Cardinals, which is a great matchup. Another thing that we learned from this Ravens-Steelers game is that J.K. Dobbins looks pretty good. I thought that we would have to ease him into our fantasy lineups, but no. He came back from missing seven weeks and put up 15 carries for 120 yards and a touchdown. Very good performance from him. The pain of this Baltimore backfield might be over but it still is very, very risky. Dobbins came back seeing 28 carries while Gus Edwards saw 21, as well as Kenyon Drake sprinkled in there a little bit too. But it looks like he does have the best chance to be the lead back in this offense. He's never really caught passes though, so you won't get that receiving upside that we do look for in running back. But I would still temper your expectations a little bit. I don't think he'll be the clear RB1 workhorse. Although he is a very high upside guy that we do need to keep our eye on moving forward. If we do go ahead and look at this Eagles-Giants game, the Eagles obviously did what the Eagles do, but Saquon Barkley, a bit of a disappointment, putting up 6.8 fantasy points. Saquon played less snaps than Gary Brightwell and Matt Breida, which could be a little bit scary for fantasy managers. While yes, this game was a bit of a blowout and he did have a questionable tag coming into this game, I don't think we should be too worried about Saquon though. We knew coming into the season that Daniel Jones was going to steal some of the rushing and rushing touchdown upside, but Saquon Barkley is still a guy that we need to be starting every week. With the name value alone that he carries, he's not going to be pushed down the depth chart like other running backs might. And yes, he does have a bit of a tough matchup against the commander's run defense next week, but it's hard for me to see a world where Saquon Barkley can't be started, even if he is a little bit risky. If we do go down to our next lesson learned in this Panthers game, it looks like the backfield might be a committee, which is a pain to say. We did see Don Foreman draw a majority of the work, but Raheem Blackshear and Chuba Hubbard take a little bit of the running work with touchdowns each. This continues to be a trend in the Panthers' backfield. You cannot start any of these running backs. Yes, they all did pretty decently and had some touchdowns, but the Panthers' offense is not going to stay this consistent. Trust me when I say this. It is still a little bit iffy, though, because this could just be a one-week thing, but I would rather just stay away from the offense entirely. There's better options to start. But that is going to wrap up our top lessons learned from this week to get ready for next week in the fantasy football playoffs coming if you did enjoy the video go ahead and drop a like and i'll see you guys in the next one coming tomorrow